Hello everyone and welcome to the uh, next video on decimals. This is a technical skills or TS video on the topic of expressions that involve decimals. A reminder uh, that an expression is a meaningful sequence of numbers, operations and quantity symbols. So uh, in this sense, uh, decimals do not add anything new to the concept of expressions other than the fact that now decimal numbers are present in your expressions. Examples of meaningful sequences of numbers, operations and quantity symbols are 4.3 plus 5.2. As you can see, there are numbers. There is an operation addition. And this one doesn't have any quantity symbols. And it's meaningful. We know what we need to do. Uh, again, when we say meaningful, it means that uh, we can work out what's written and arrive at a number, at an answer to that. Uh, if it can be done, then the sequence is meaningful, otherwise it's not. Negative 7.6 minus 2 times negative, ne negative 3.5. And again, this is an expression. Uh, it's got numbers like negative 7.6 to negative 3.5. There are two operations. There is a multiplication here. There is a subtraction there. And it's meaningful. Here we understand that we need to multiply 2 by negative 3.5 and then combine it with negative 7.6. Uh, we can have longer ones like negative 2.1 times 3.3 plus 2.8 times 4.7 minus 0 0.4 times, uh, and I should Yes, I should say bracket open, negative 3 times 4.9 minus 1.7 bracket close. Uh, there could be division multiplication within each term, such as uh, <clears throat> negative 3.7 times 2.6 divided by 1.9 times 3.4 plus 2.7 divided by negative 3.8. But this one is not an expression, 4.3 plus times and then nothing. And uh, for one thing, we don't know whether we should add or multiply, and then there is no clarity as to what we should add or multiply 4.32 or by. And, uh, and so this is not an expression. That's where, that's where the meaningfulness comes in. Uh, again, we cannot really work this out and arrive at a number, and so, so uh, it's not a meaningful uh, sequence of numbers, operations, and quantity symbols. Okay, so, uh, so far there's been nothing new. Basically, this was uh, sort of like a review of what expressions are and what they are not. To work them out, uh, we follow the exact same technique that we introduced with integers. Uh, again, there is pretty much nothing new in this algorithm, uh, which is nice. To evaluate an expression involving decimals, stage one is to analyze or break it down. Break the expression into terms. Uh, to do that, you use additions and subtractions outside brackets, just as a reminder. Break each term into factors, and these are things that you multiply. In case your factors involve uh, division using the horizontal line, then you can also talk about factors on the top of it in the dividend part, uh, which are numbers that are being multiplied on the top, and factors in the divisor, which are numbers that uh, are present uh, down underneath the horizontal line. Uh, the whole division is seen as one factor, but we can also talk about factors in its dividend and factors in its divisor. And then we break each factor further if needed. Once we have broken things down to their tiniest units, then we go the other way and we synthesize. And this means that we put the small pieces back together to make larger ones, and then we put those larger ones together to get uh, even larger pieces. Uh, until eventually we get the whole expression. So we work out the factors, and then we work out the terms by multiplying the factors. Uh, work out the sign, followed by magnitude, in, in an identical way as we had with, uh, with integers. And step three, evaluate the expression by adding and subtracting the terms. Again, sign, followed by magnitude. And again, this follows the same algorithm that we had uh, when we worked with, uh, with integers. Okay, so as examples, uh, number one, uh, we have 4.2 times negative 3.4 plus 3.1 times 2.5. There are two terms. Uh, the addition outside brackets breaks it down into two terms. Term number one is 4.2 times negative 3.4, and 
and term number two is 3.1 times 2.5. So these are the terms, the marks, the entities are the terms. Uh, so this is uh, step one, uh, step uh, one, one, I guess. Uh, break the expression into terms. And then within terms, you can break the expression into factors. Here we have two of them, 4.2, and the other one is negative 3.4. These are the two numbers that we are multiplying. Each one is a factor. And in the second term, we have two factors, 3.1 multiplied by 2.5. So factor 1 is 3.1, factor 2 is 2.5. We call them factors because we are multiplying them. OK. Now the factors cannot be broken down anymore because 4.2 is just 4.2, and negative 3.4 is just it, negative 3.4. Same thing for 3.1 and 2.5. So the analysis stage is done. We broke the expression into terms and broke each term into factors. This gives us insight into what it is that the people who wrote it down want us to do or think about. Now we go to the second stage, synthesize. <clears throat> and here we work out the factors. That's already done. Again, 4.2 is just 4.2, nothing to do with it. Negative 3.4, same thing, and so on. Uh, step number two, evaluate the terms by multiplying the factors, sine followed by magnitude. So here we work out the sine to be negative <clears throat> because the whole term contains one negative sign, that's odd, following the same rules as we had for integers. And then once we have worked out the sine, then we work out the magnitude. So initially we put down minus. And then we work at the magnitude, 4.2 times 3.4 is 14.28. You notice that when I, uh, once I have worked out the sign to be, a, uh, to be negative, then I, I don't bother with the sign anymore. Now I multiply 4.2 by 3.4. And you can follow the algorithm that we introduced in the, in the previous video on multiplication and division of decimals to work it out. And then for the second term, uh, we put down a plus sign first because there are no negatives, it will be a plus. And then we put down 3.1 times 2.5, which is 7.75. So that's how we would work out uh, this expression. All right, uh, so the next line is going to read <clears throat> negative 14.28 plus 7.75. So again, sign followed by magnitude, 4.2 times 3.4 work out the sign, then the magnitude, 3.1 times 2.5. Okay, uh, addition subtraction of decimals, we've talked about this in an earlier video. Uh, ideas are the same as integers, work out the sign. Now in this case, we have, uh, we have a larger loss compared to the gain, and therefore it will be negative. And because one is a loss and one is a gain, we subtract 14.28 minus 7.75 to get 6.53. And so the answer is negative 6.53. Problem number two. <clears throat> we have uh, negative 1.7 times negative 2.2 times 2 minus negative 3.4 times 3. This one also has two terms. Uh, you see, owing to the fact that we use brackets to enclose negative numbers, other than the leading one uh, at the very beginning of the expression, uh, any, anything that, uh, that, uh, that's a minus or plus and it's not inside brackets will count uh, as, a, as an addition or a subtraction. So it makes it visually very easy to tell how many terms we have. In this case, we have two terms. And these are negative 1.7 times negative 2.2 times 2. That's term number 1. Uh, followed by term number 2, which is negative 3.4 times 3. Now, term number 1 has three factors negative 1.7, negative 2.2, and 2. These are the three numbers that we are multiplying, and so we call them factors. Term number 2 has two factors, negative 3.4 and 3. These are the numbers that we are multiplying in term number 2, and so we call them factors. Uh, now, factors cannot be broken down in this case anymore. Negative 1.7 is just what it is. Negative 1.7, same thing with all the other factors. And therefore, we are done with the analysis stage. Now, we synthesize the expression, uh, work out the factors, they're done. Then, multiply the factors to work out the terms. And this is when we work out again, uh, work out the sign followed by magnitude. For term number one, 
there are two negatives and that makes the number the term positive so I'm not going to write plus but from this point on I'm going to ignore the signs and just multiply 1.7 by 2.2 by 2 and that will give me 7.48 then term number two work out the sign uh, counting the subtraction as a negative as I said uh, in the videos that we had for addition and subtraction of integers uh, it makes it easier if we see that as a negative sign or count it as a negative sign uh, when we count the total number of negatives uh, it provides us with a shortcut that combines a subtraction of a negative value to, to adding it uh, there are two negatives as you can see here then and then uh, that turns it into a plus so we put down a plus and once we've worked out the sign we uh, just multiply the numbers 3.4 times 3 which is 10.2 so that becomes our next line okay let's uh, show that line then uh, now that's pretty easy now there are no negative numbers uh, to worry about and it's just an addition 7.48 plus 10.2 you line up the decimal point and add to get 17.68 Problem number three. Now this one uh, has uh, has two terms as well. This is pretty interesting because uh, keep in mind that initially we only look at additions and subtractions outside brackets. And in this case, there is only one right there. And that gives us two terms. Term number one has two factors. Now with this one, I would like to highlight the factors so you can see them better. Uh, so starting with uh, the first factor in the, in uh, term number one which is 5.3 there you have it uh, it's highlighted now and then uh, following that we multiply this uh, the way we see the expression is that this is being multiplied by the bracket that follows and therefore the brackets make the second factor there are two factors within term number one we are multiplying negative 5.3 by whatever the bracket will come to in the end and same thing for term number two in the case of uh, term number two, we have 3.5, which is one factor. So let's highlight that. And then this is followed by the second factor, which is the bracket. And there you have it. All right. Uh, now, the factors can be broken down in this case. Uh, not factor number one in term number one, negative 5.3. But we can uh, we can break down the second factor, which is uh, which is what we have inside brackets. Uh, this is the time to look inside brackets. Uh, and and now when we look inside this uh, this factor, we find that it has two terms, negative two point four, and one point seven times nine point two. Same thing with the second term. The first factor is done. There is nothing to do with it anymore. It's just 3.5. But the second factor has got two terms. The first one is negative 4.8 times 2.1, and the second one is 1.9. All right, uh, so now we have an understanding of how this was uh, put together. And now what we can do is move on to the second stage and synthesize. We work out the factors. Factor number one is done. But we can work out factor number two. We can work out the terms and then add them up. At the same time, we can work on the second term. Factor number one is done. Factor number two, we can work it out by working out the terms and then adding them. So the next line will read as as what you see. And uh, now let's uh, let's also take the time and uh, maybe highlight. Uh, the factors in this one as well uh, because uh, it's important to see how things are, are progressing as we go from one line to the next so we have 5.3 and then following that we have the brackets again as the second factor you notice that uh, the second factor isn't done yet uh, all we did is work out the terms within that factor we still have to add them up to work out the factor uh, in, in total uh, same thing on the right side on the, with the second uh, second term <clears throat> what we have is uh, 3.5 as factor number one and then the brackets constitute factor number two and there you have it and again factor number two still needs to be uh, to be completed uh, we move on to the next line where we work out factor number two in both of the terms in term number one it turns out to be 13.24 and in term number two, it's 
I'm still going to uh, highlight uh, these factors and uh, now that they are done uh, let's just uh, show what they've become so factor number one in term number one factor number one is negative 5.3 and factor number two has been worked out to 13.4 at this stage where we are working out the factors within terms, this is what uh, synthesized step one is about. Evaluate the factors, work the factors out. Once you know where they are, this factor, then work it out. And in term number two, we have uh, 3.5. Now, where is that one? Okay, there it is. Okay, so 3.5 is factor number one, and that's followed by 11.98, which is factor number two. Now the factors have been worked out. We do the multiplications uh, to work out the terms. Term number one will be negative, and then we multiply 5.3 by 13.24 to get 70.172. Subtract, multiply 3.5 by 11.198 to get 41.93. So now we have negative, work out the sign, and then ignore the sign. 5.3 times 13.24 is 70.172 minus 3.5 times 11.98. So here we multiply the factors to get the terms, and this corresponds to step two of the synthesis stage. Evaluate the terms by multiplying the factors. And finally, we evaluate the expression by adding and subtracting the terms. So we have uh, two losses in a row, which will be a net loss. So we put down the minus, uh, and then we add the two because we are uh, looking for the total loss and that gives us 112.102 and so the final line uh, will read as negative 112.102 problem number four uh, a very interesting problem negative negative 7.6 plus negative 2.7 minus negative 9.3 minus 4.5 and the terms are as follows there are four of them uh, the addition, subtraction here, and the subtraction here. Break the expression into four terms. For each term, we work out the sign and then the magnitude. The magnitude is just a number, so it's really a question of the sign. Uh, two negatives make a plus. One negative makes a minus. Counting this one as a negative, two negatives make a plus and then a minus. So our next line is 7.6, that's uh, two negatives make a plus, and then 7.6. Uh, one negative makes it a minus, 2.7. Two negatives make it a plus, 9.3, and then subtract 4.5. All right, uh, this can be worked out to 9.7. And of course, you can go from left to right and perform the additions and subtractions as you see them. That would be an appropriate way if you're doing the work on a calculator. Uh, you punch in 7.6 minus 2.7 plus 9.3 minus 4.5 and then equals. However, if you're working by hand, a different approach may be preferable. Uh, generally speaking, subtractions are more time consuming than additions. And therefore, we would like to minimize the number of subtractions uh, if, uh, if it's possible, if you're working by hand. And in such a case, we've talked about this before as well, you can think of the expression that's, uh, that's given uh, as uh, as uh, 7.6 which is being added if you like to 0 and then 2.7 is being subtracted then we add 9.3 and then we subtract 4.5 so that's the proper way to look at this expression and then uh, what we can do is we can then find the total gains which is 7.6 plus 9.3 and instead of subtracting 2.7 and then subtracting 4.5 we subtract the sum of them and therefore we end up with uh, this kind of an expression. So you see 7.6, which is a gain, we add 9.3, and then we subtract the sum of 2.7 and 4.5. Again, this does make sense. So if you started with, let's say, 7.6 liters of a solution, then you used 2.7 liters of that solution. Then you added 9.3 liters of the solution, and then you used 4.5 liters of the solution. To find out how much you have, you could start with what you started with, which was 7.6 liters, then subtract uh, whatever you used the first time, add whatever you added, and then subtract whatever you used uh, the second time. Or you can, if, if all you care about is what's the total at the end, 
then what you can do is you can add all of the gains, which is 7.6, which is what you started with, and then add the 9.3 that you added at some point, and then subtract the sum of all the usages, which was 2.7 liters and 4.5 liters. Uh, and in this way, we reduce the number of subtractions to only one, no matter how long this is. It will turn into one chain addition over here, one chain addition over here. Uh, so the chain addition over here would deal with all of the all of the gains. The chain addition here would deal with all of the losses. And then you do one subtraction. Subtract the total loss from the total gain. The top row, use it when you have a calculator. Think this way if you're working it out by hand. All right, uh, problem number five. Now here we have uh, chain multiplication division, negative 8.5 times 3.4 divided by 17 divided by 6.8. And uh, here what we can do is, we have only one term by the way, uh, there are no additions or subtractions to break it up. Uh, we can always, with a chain multiplication division, we can always go from left to right and finish the problem and that gives us negative 0 0.25. Now, uh, just like addition subtraction, the kind of relationship that you see here where uh, a whole bunch of subtractions can be turned into subtraction of a sum. We can do the same with multiplication division, chain multiplication division. And of course, to begin, we view the expression that's given as 1 times negative 8.5 uh, times 3.4 divided by 17 divided by 6.8. So 1 times is sort of written in a gray color, so you realize that uh, you don't really write it down, but you can think of it that way. If you're dealing with terms, you can always begin with zero plus. If you're dealing with factors, you can always uh, think about uh, starting with one times. And so here uh, we have one times eight, negative 8.5 times 3.4 divided by 17 divided by 6.8. And again, if you're working on a calculator, uh, the sequence that you see is fine. Uh, you can change the sequence. You can uh, start with, uh, let's say, 1 here, and then divide by 17, then times 3.4, then times negative 8.5, and then divide by 6.8. Uh, you will get the same answer as you try any other sequence. Again, so long as you keep in mind that uh, you have to divide by 17 at some point. You have to multiply by 3.4 at some point. Uh, then you will get the same answer from here. Now, if you're working by hand though, just like the case for addition and subtraction, uh, it's, it's the division that's time consuming. And so we would like to minimize the number of divisions that we have to do. And uh, one way to do that is to multiply the ones that you are multiplying, like negative 8.5 and 3.4, and then divide by the product of 17 and 6.8. Uh, you may not be as familiar with this as you are with the case of uh, addition and subtraction. But it does actually work. Uh, so one way to think about this is, actually, let me actually see if I can uh, write something down here. Uh, let's say that we have, uh, we are dividing, so divide uh, by, let's say, uh, six. And uh, what I would like to say is that this is the same as uh, dividing by, so let me type in divide again, sorry about that uh, kind of glitch a bit, uh, and we divide by, uh, let's say, 2 times 3. Okay, and uh, that should be in brackets. So we divide by 2 times 3. And also, uh, we divide by, uh, let's say, 2, and then divide by 3. And, uh, and these are all the same. Uh, and, uh, and one way to see that they are the same is to think of a pie. If you want to divide a pie into six parts, now I hope uh, the way you do that is not by taking a guess at how big one sixth would be because quite often that leads to unequal sized pieces. It's much easier if you divide into six parts, let's say a pizza or a pie, to divide the pie into two parts first and then you divide each part into three. Uh, so instead of dividing by six, which is the same as divide by two times three in brackets, uh, it does make sense to divide into two parts 
and then take each part and divide into three parts. And so as you can see, division by a product becomes individual divisions. And that's what we are talking about here. Division by 17 times 6.8. If you have a product, please keep in mind you have to have that product, not addition or subtraction or anything like that. Then it becomes individual divisions. And it's based on the same understanding that I just told you. Divide the pi into six parts. You would normally divide it into two parts and then take, the, take a half and divide that into three parts. Now, whether or not you cut the pizza in that way, <laughs> Uh, it does make sense that it could be done that way, right? So division by 6, which is the same as division by 2 times 3, is the same as division by 2 followed by division by 3. All right, uh, let's get rid of what I just typed. All right, uh, so the, the sequence you see at the top works pretty well on a calculator if you're working by hand. This one may be easier to use. It's got only one division. You know the two, uh, let me actually put this diagram as well to show you how the two of them are related. Here we have a uh, sum and then subtract the sum of the values that are losses, the, the values that we are subtracting here. We find the total sum and then subtract the sum. And here, if you're dividing by 17 and 6.8, you can find the product of them and then divide by that product. And we can see the similarities between how addition and subtraction are related and how multiplication and division are related. Okay, next problem, identical to what we have in number five, written using a different notation. By now you should know that division by a product, and now if, if here we use the horizontal line to represent division with, it's division by whatever is down here. So division by a product becomes individual divisions. So these two problems are really the same. We really prefer the second one in the sciences. And uh, I have already given some reasons for why the horizontal line is a better notation compared to other notations for division. And I will give you more reasons in the future. Uh, but for now, uh, these two expressions are the same. And therefore, we can think of this as well as negative 8.5 times 3.4 divided by 17 divided by 6.8. Now keep in mind, if I have a calculator in my hand, uh, if, I, if I'm working this out by hand, I would work out the top, the bottom, then divide. And the reason is because uh, I will do one division. But if I'm working on a calculator, then it may be easier to, uh, for us to follow the other approach where, where we say that uh, division by a product is individual divisions. So that way, we don't have to multiply 8.5 by 3.4, keep that in memory, multiply 17 by 6.8, keep that in memory, and then recall the first storage and divide by the second storage. Uh, here it's much more efficient, much faster, if we simply do 8.5, and I can also make it negative here. Actually, let me restart, instead of typing, I'm going to click on the buttons so you can see. So we have 8.5, and then make it negative. And then uh, we multiply by 3.4, so times 3.4. And then I divide by 17, divide by 17. And then I divide by 6.8, divide by 6.8 and we get negative 0 0.25, which is the same answer that we got here. So as you can see, uh, we, can, we can multiply the top and then divide by each factor in the, uh, in the bottom uh, individually. Once again, I draw your attention to please remember that you can do this if you have times. <clears throat> it's the division of a product that turns into individual divisions. And so you have to have a product down here. So division by a product becomes division by each factor individually. The whole thing we see that's one term. We could say that the top has two factors and the bottom has two factors. The whole thing is one term and the whole thing is one factor. Uh, but the top of it has two factors and the bottom of it has two factors. And we work it out however we like, whether uh, through working at the top, the bottom, then divide, 
which is a better approach if you're working by hand, it has one division. Or we multiply the top and then divide by each of the factors in the denominator in sequence, which is a better approach if you're working on a calculator. And in all cases, we get 0 0.25. Okay, I believe this is the last example. We've got two terms. And for term number one, again, uh, if I may use the calculator one more time to show you. <clears throat> for term number one, okay, here we type uh, 5.22, make it negative, and then times 1.2, times 1.2. And then I divide by, I don't even have to say equals until the end. I divide by 0 0.3, divide by 0.3, and then divide by 2, divide by 2, and that's equal to negative 10.44. And we can do the same with the second one, negative 1.5, divide by 0 0.05, divide by 2, and that gives us 15. And so the next line reads as negative 10.44 minus 15. Two losses in a row. It will be a loss, so negative, and then they add up to 25.4. Okay, uh, so what we had here <clears throat> in the previous problem, number six, uh, was uh, a setup like this. And uh, for this setup, uh, we notice that uh, this is the same as uh, writing down negative 8.5 times 3.4, then divide by all of what's down here, which is what I, why I'm using brackets. Uh, otherwise, I would be dividing by 17 only, and then multiply the answer by 6.8 rather than divide by the product. Uh, so these two are the same, and uh, we just talked about the fact that division by product becomes individual divisions. So as you can see, the top expression can be done by doing it like this, which is a good way if you're working by hand, or doing it like this, which is a good way of doing it if you're working on a calculator. Okay, everyone, this brings us to the end of the series for decimals. Later, I may add on more topics on decimals, such as, uh, such as graphing and such, uh, but for now, uh, this is it, uh, and uh, in, starting in the next video, I will be talking about how we work with scientific notation. Thanks as always for watching, and I wish you a great day, night, evening, wherever you are. And until then, I will be gone in 3, 2, 1.